Welcome to the Planted Not Buried podcast. I'm your host, Lance Donvold, motivational speaker and former professional athlete with the Seattle Mariners. The mission of this podcast is to sow seeds of hope into your soul, dig up deep roots of purpose within you that have yet to be uncovered, and grow you exactly where God has planted you so that you can reap your ultimate harvest in life. I will be your host throughout this podcast, and you can expect power-packed, spirit-led, short, motivational messages designed to pierce your heart and move you into immediate action. Whether you're at the gym, in the car, or anywhere in between, I know how busy your life is, and want to personally thank you for taking the time to listen. My message for you is this. You are here on this earth for a reason. You've been planted for a season, and it's time to grow into all you are supposed to become. Please partner with me in planting this message of hope all over the world. And it starts with sowing one seed, sowing one episode into somebody else's life that could change them forever. Not because of me and my power, but because of God and the words he is going to speak through me and the way he is going to use you to distribute this message. Here are a few ways that we can plant this message into other people. Number one, subscribe to the podcast. I'll be dropping frequent messages designed to uplift, encourage, and reshape the way that you think. Please leave a review. I'm always going for a five-star rating. Number two, just share this podcast with somebody else. You're hearing this for a reason. Pour out this message to somebody else that needs it. Share it via text or just simply take a screenshot and post it to your Instagram story and tag me and I will always do my best to give you a a shout out and a repost. You can tag me at Lanny T 42 on Instagram. And with your help together, we can keep plowing for a more purposeful tomorrow and put your gloves on folks because we got root work to do. Welcome to the planted, not buried podcast. Welcome back everybody to the planted, not buried podcast. Today's message is called comebacks don't always conceive championships. Ooh, buddy. Ooh, buddy, come on now. Comebacks don't always conceive championships. But what I didn't mention in the title is comebacks always conceive champions. Like you are a champion. Like you are enough. Like I need to tell you, I think there's some people out here that their comeback didn't lead to the external destination or the external result that they wanted and they're starting to discredit all that they've done in their life. Like, here's the thing, comebacks aren't always gonna lead to a championship, but you will become a champion when you make your comeback. Like, you gotta give yourself some grace. You gotta give yourself some credit for the places that you've gone through, for the, for the turmoil that you've dealt with, for, the places that you've climbed out of and the holes that you've come from. Like there's a lot of you out there that you haven't won, you didn't win the championship, so you're discrediting all that you did in your comeback. And listen, listen, I didn't get my championship. Like I seriously, I didn't get my championship. I didn't get the major leagues. And I faced a comeback for three years. For three straight seasons, I was in comeback mode. And I thought after this comeback was over, it was going to be the story that I wanted to write. It was going to be the story that I was writing in my head that I was going to get the championship. And I was going to get back to who I was. I was going to climb the ladder of success. And I was going to be a major leaguer. Like that was my championship was the major leagues. But, but it didn't work out that way. So let, let, me, let, me, let me take you back a little bit. To, I want to take you to the end of my career. Like the very end of my rehab. The very end of me being uh, you know, planted at the Peoria Sports Complex. So for those of you who don't know, I was at the University of Minnesota. Then the Seattle Mariners organization drafted me. You know, I was pitching really well. Then I got hurt. Tommy John. And then you know, three seasons later... Here I am after all this turmoil, after all this stuff that God had planted on me to carry, right? Like like he was planted on me to carry it so that I could build my character so that it could compound into a character trait and a calling that he was going to use in the future. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We got to back up a little bit. So 
as I'm going through 2016, hurt, 2017, hurt, 2018, mostly hurt, I'm making my comeback. Like I'm finally making my comeback. And I can remember how good I was starting to feel. Like I was in, you know, March, April, May of 2018. This was my third straight season rehabbing my Tommy John, PRP, stem cell, PR, or, uh, loose fragmented bones, um, stress fractures. Like I'm finally starting to get back into the low 90s. I'm throwing all my pitches for strikes. Like I really think, you know, and here's the thing, I'm 24 years old at this time. I've been rehabbing since I was, you know, 22. Okay. And I just spent all this time at the complex in in arizona just rehabbing and i was like this comeback has to end in a championship for it to be worth it for there to have value in this comeback Mm. like i think some of you today think that you, you you were thinking just like me that all the work that i've done is discredited if i don't get what i want at the end Mm, mm. I think there's a lot of athletes, there's a lot of people who are striving right now thinking that the places that I've that I've gone through only matter if I get the trophy or I get the championship at the end of it. That's not true. That's not true. But you got to be able to change and flip your mindset and your perspective to understand that you're a champion even if you don't get the championship. So listen, listen, 2018 comes around. I'm getting back to who I was as a pitcher on the mound. I'm better. I'm more fluid. My motion is better. It's all cleaned up. The Mariners have been working with me. The coaches were were amazing. They were doing, they were operating their gift, changing the way that I threw, getting my mechanics better. The stem cell transplant was working. I was throwing 93 miles per hour. And, you know, the 2018 draft came along and uh, I can remember not seeing my name on the roster to go to one of the minor league teams. And I was like, this isn't a good sign. And it was right after the draft of 2018, the, um, all the, you know, the people who had won the, run the player operations, they called me into the office. I, you know, I kind of know what's coming. My agent had kind of told me, listen, hey, you're not, you didn't get assigned to that team. You know, you may be getting released. And I can remember them bringing me in and I said, you know what, Lance, uh, thank you for all that you've done for you. The Seattle Mariners are, you know, hereby releasing you. Like, that's not a championship. That's that's not what I had planned. That's not what I had written down. That's not what I my goal was. I'm falling way short now. Like, listen, listen, I'm falling way short of what I thought was going to happen. Like not only did I I spend all this time on this comeback for 3 years of my life. Mind you, you know, I left school early, right? I left school early to pursue professional baseball. There's not a whole lot I have to fall back on. And I just put 3 seasons of my life into making this comeback and before I can even go prove that it was worth it, I get cut. I get cut. Here's your release papers, Lance. Thank you for all that you've done. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm driving in my car home. I'm driving in my truck home thinking like, what was it? Was it even worth it? Like, what was the point? I remember calling my dad. I call him Kaylee, my soon to be wife. Like, what was the point of all this? Like, why God, why would you bring me this far to cut me loose, to cut me loose into something new, and I think there's some of you out there that you, you you've you went through you've gone through so much crap, you've gone through so many circumstances that aren't ideal, that didn't lead to the championship that you thought, and you're discrediting your comeback. That's the same thing I was doing. And listen, it gets a little bit better than this. Because after I get released, I'm, I'm sitting at home for, you know, three, four, five, six days, um, you know, trying to figure out my life. What the heck am I going to do? Am I going to go get a job? I get a call from this team out in New Jersey, Sussex County, Sussex County Miners. They call me up, Lance, did you come play for us? I'm like, all right, I haven't been in game action in three seasons. Like, you understand that, coach? Like, I haven't pitched in a game in three years. Like, under the lights with the adrenaline, like, I'm going to need some time to make my comeback. 
And now I'm starting to think, okay, well, what if, what if I'm taking a roundabout way back to the major leagues? And I and, and I got to go through Sussex County. And my first game, oh, hold on, before I even get to my first game, I remember it, I, I wake up at 5 o'clock, I'm headed to New York, and then I'm going to take a, uh, an Uber into Jersey. It's like an 11-hour day, right? And I get there right before game time. And, you know, this isn't, this isn't the Seattle Mariners anymore. Like, I can remember that, like, there was, there was no food. Like, my pants had holes in them. Like, my, my locker had, like, a piece of duct tape that said Thonvold on it. <laughs> I was just like, okay, you know, we're, we're far from where I was. Um, but it was building my character. Like, it, it was building the depth of my character. It was building the depth of, of me. And I, and I needed this, this moment to be able to speak it to you. Because some of you have been going through circumstances that aren't aligned with who you believe that you are. And I had to go through the same thing. And I'm in this place that, you know, I want to be in because I think it's a launching pad to my championship, which is the major leagues. But really, it's just another piece added to my character belt. It's just another notch on my character belt that God is going to use later on in life. And, and so that first night, like, listen, this is funny. That first night um i'm like okay like sweet game's over i'm like okay where am i staying like i go up to the coaches or the, the admin people and i was like yeah like uh, what hotel am i at like who you guys got me with they're like oh like nobody <laughs> like nobody we, we ain't got you staying anywhere you can actually sleep in the clubhouse tonight <laughs> they said you can sleep in the clubhouse tonight so that night i slept on the couch you know this 15 year old couch that i've been you know, tons of players coming through the locker room. You know, those of you that are hearing this, that played with me out there, like, you know, and I slept on that couch that night, got up at three o'clock and we drove to Quebec. And this is where I made my last appearance. One of my last appearances in baseball. And we were in Quebec, man. Lights were on, huge crowd, awesome place to play. I was playing against one of my buddies uh, with the Mariners. Shout out Tyler Kanigi. What's going on, brother? And... Oh, man, I remember coming out that night in the fifth inning. And listen, I haven't played in three years. And I'm making my comeback. It's the fifth inning. All I had done up to this point was practice games with the Mariners, like in their uh, extended spring training. And I come into the game, bases loaded, and I'm coming in hot, baby. I got the juice rolling. Like I got the juice. I can feel it coming out of my hand. Bam, bam, bam. You know, struck a guy out, broke a guy's bat, got another guy to fly out. And I was like, ooh, that's it. That's the comeback. The gun was juiced up. Like, I was throwing some smoke. It felt good coming out of my arm. First time under the lights, that adrenaline was, you just can't, you can't, you can't compare that type of adrenaline to being on the mound under the lights. And I thought, I sat down on the bench. I was like, ooh, that's cool. Like, like, sit me down, coach. Like, I'll take that. Like, that's my first outing in three years. He comes up to me. He goes, you got another one. And I'm, I was like, what? How can I have another inning? Man, I, I told you before I came, like, I haven't pitched in a real game in three years. Like, I probably only have 20 to 25 pitches in me, and we can build me up as the season goes along. But he's like, you got another one. So I go off for the second inning, of course, come out, bam, bam, bam. Things are going really well. Last hitter of the inning, 18 pitch at bat. And I remember, like, pitch 11 or 12, I threw a slider, and boom stress fracture like something happened in my elbow again something tweaked I, I looked back at the radar gun i saw my pitches just going south like got out of that inning but i, I remember facetiming kaylee after the outing and my, my elbow was double in size again like here here's my triumphant comeback my championship i get cut by the mariners i go to new jersey i go to quebec i sleep it on the couch like I'm thinking to myself, like, is this for real? Like, what was all that work for? What was all that work for? And, man, this was just crazy. And I pitched a couple more times, but I knew I just didn't have it. My elbow was doubling size. I was throwing in the low 80s. I was throwing sliders at the backstop. You can go look at my stats. I threw four innings out there for Sussex County. I didn't give up any runs. Somehow I had, like, four four pitches to the backstop like five walks but every time the ball was hit like somebody caught it it was just it was hilarious so i had a zero era out there but you know probably the worst i ever felt but at that time you know 
I needed to pack up my bags on the championship I was chasing and I needed to step in to his calling and I needed to become a champion in his calling, a champion in God's calling and what he had to do in me to get my character to a point of conviction to know that my worth and my value didn't come from the championship I was chasing, but it come, but it was coming from the champion that God is. Like that was the total shift. And that's the shift I think he's trying to tell you right now. Is like you have gone through some things and you missed out on your championship. Like you missed out on your major leagues, but he needs you to look at him as the champion. Because he is going to build a champion inside of you that can only accomplish his calling. But he can't have you clinging to your old mindset and your old championship in your life. Like he, he needed to rip that out of me. Like, and here's the thing. This is why I, I got to clarify this. There are some people that are going to be champions in their mind and, 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 be, and be after the championship that God has for them. Like they're going to be in the lane that they want to be in. And that's also going to be the lane that God wants them to be in. But there's also going to be some people like me that I didn't get my championship. Like I didn't get my championship that I wanted, but it was preparing me for his calling. It was preparing me for the calling that God had on my life. Because here, here's the thing, like God is going to use... Like he is a big, big user of compounding character. Like he is going to use the the character that had the compound inside of me over those three years of trials and tribulations and showing up and doing the work, even when the circumstances weren't going my way. He needed the, he was going to use those in order for me to be a champion in his calling. Okay. Okay. So the three ways for you guys to be a champion in God's calling, here are the three ways to do it. And this is what I want you to take away. This is what I want you to apply to it. So the, the three ways to do that is you got to understand and you got to be up for the challenge. So you got to be up for the challenge that you're going to face every single day. Like, and you got to face every day one step at a time. You got you literally got to micro this thing down. To face the challenge that you're going through one day at a time. And if, if you can wrap your mind around that, like every single day that I showed up to the rehab complex in Peoria, Arizona for those three seasons, I, the, the Bible verse Colossians 3.23 just stuck with me. Cling to your, or, um, and that says, that says, work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. Colossians 3.23, work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. And I clung to that Bible verse in Colossians. Every single day I was up for the challenge. And I said, today's work is for God. Today's work is for building my character. It's for getting to the championship I want. And then through through time, it was revealed to me that the championship I want wasn't the championship that God wanted. He wanted me to be a champion in his calling. He's telling you the same thing. Like, number one, to be a champion in his calling is be up for the challenge and face it daily. Do everything in your possible control to face the challenges you're facing right now. And wake up and go and get it every single day and take it one day at a time. I didn't know what the future held for me, but that didn't change the way that I acted, behaved, and took the day head on. Number two, to be a champion in his in his calling is circumstances. And when I say circumstances, is they're not always going to be going your way. Like there, there is going to be some times that you're ebbing and flowing, but there's also going to be some external circumstances that aren't going to be aligned with where you think you should be going. Like you're going to face some bumps in the road. Like I can remember going to the doctor six or seven times throughout my rehab getting bad MRI results. Like my circumstances weren't good, but that didn't change the way that I challenged myself every single day. Like there, there is a, there is a message in that when your circumstances aren't going well, how do you show up? Like how do you show up when it's not ideal? So put your circumstances aside 
and keep moving forward. Like keep being surrendered to where you're at in the places that you're supposed to go. And and the crazy thing is, sometimes we don't know the places that we're going to end up. And that's the challenge. And the third way to be a champion in his calling is you got to understand you're chosen. Like you are chosen. You are chosen for a higher purpose and a higher calling. You're chosen. I know it. And you got to believe that yourself. You got to believe that in your soul. You got to get with God. Like you got to get to a place that you understand like how valuable you are. Like if you don't understand your value, you can't understand how chosen you are. Like you've been hand selected and hand picked for the calling. And operate, operate in that idea, in that life in that you are chosen that is how you're going to be able to be a champion in his calling is you're chosen i know you have the character i know you've been compounding the habits throughout your comeback whether the comeback has led to your championship or not but ultimately every single day to be a champion in his calling you got to be up for the challenge you got to Face whatever circumstances you're supposed to face. And number three is you got to understand how chosen you are. Whether things are going right or are not going right, you are chosen. And he's using your current circumstance to propel you to his ultimate calling. Like you are called for something. He's using your current situation to propel you to places and propel you to the mindset and propel you to the level of character he needs you to have for you to be able to operate and lead and distribute the gifts that he's going to pour into you to his people like let's go like come on you are chosen like be be a champion in god's calling thank you for listening we'll see you next time on the planted not buried podcast let's go baby as always get your gloves on we got root work to do Thank you for listening to the Planted Not Buried podcast. Remember, you're here on this earth for a reason. You've been planted for a season, and it's time to grow into all you're supposed to become. Please partner with me in planting this message of hope all over the world. It starts with just sowing one seed and sowing one episode into somebody else's life that could literally change them forever, not because of me and my power, but because of what God is going to speak through me and how he's going to use you to distribute his messages. And here's just a few ways that we can plant this message into other people. Number one, just subscribe to the podcast. I'm going to be dropping frequent power packed messages designed to uplift, encourage and reshape the way you think. Leave a five star review and just share this podcast with somebody else. You're hearing it for a reason. Pour it out to somebody else that you know that needs it. Pray about it. Think about it and share it with them via text or just take a screenshot and post it to your Instagram or Facebook story. And I'll always do my best to give you a shout out or repost and with your help you guys together we can keep plowing for a more purposeful tomorrow if you want to get connected with me further or have me come out and speak to your uh, school speak to your organization or team just go to lancedonville.com and fill out the booking form or just simply email me at info at lancedonville.com or we can get connected on all social platforms under lance donvold or lanny t42 on instagram As always, guys, put your gloves on because we got root work to do. We will see you next time on the Planted Not Buried podcast.